Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and I'm your host, and we're coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV, and you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. We're at 617-708-3290. There it is right there across the bottom of the, of the screen. And if you have a block on your phone, Star 82 gets you right to the great staff, Dave and the gang are in the other room answering phones. So please, if you feel like giving us a call and letting us know what's going on artfully in your community, please feel free to do so. I want to remind everybody right off the bat to vote tomorrow. Tomorrow is a very, very important day here in the city of Boston. We are redesigning the entire city council and the head office, the head man's office, the great Tom Menino has, as everybody knows by now, is moving on with, with his adventure and uh, it's no longer going to involve being mayor of the city of Boston. So we are going to have somebody new at the helm and a whole bunch of new, new cats in, 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 in uh, the city council. So please make sure you get out there and vote. This is an important one. So uh, especially for us in the arts. I mean, there's so many things that we want to talk about, we want to get, and we, and we need to get uh, solved as far as education in the, in the, in the school system where the arts and, uh, seem to take a little bit of a beating here and there. And I, I, I've talked to many of the candidates, and, and everybody says to me, oh, yeah, Glenn, yeah, we want the arts. So that makes it all the more difficult. So I think that everybody that's up there doing this is, is anybody that puts themselves ahead to do public service uh, deserves a, an incredible uh, handshake and pat on the back. I think that it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for the city and uh, uh, we're going to be anew this time next week. So I know it's only the, the primary, but it, it, we're going to be narrowing it right down to some very serious candidates and now the, then the serious talk will begin. I want a big shout out and thank you to Steve Gag, Laura Gang over there in Rosendale. They had their backyard stomp Saturday evening, and it was a great fundraiser for the Rosendale Village Main Street's Farmer's Market. Uh, Zilly Mizik played, and uh, I got the privilege and honor to run sound for them. It was a great evening. Anybody that was there knows it. I mean, we were supposed to get stormed on. It was supposed to rain biblically, but it, it never did. It was just a beautiful night, and everybody had a lot of fun. So thank you to anyone that came out for that. Uh, it's a, for a great cause, that, that Farmer's Market in Rosendale, which has been going on for like 29 years now, but is right now at the peak of, uh, of its success. So thank you very much for being part of that. Uh, actually coming up, I think that I should talk a little bit about the CD release from um, uh, Low Budget Records. We all got together and did a compilation of monkey songs. Now, for you cats that are too young to remember the monkeys, they were a television show in the 60s who was kind of like paralleling the uh, Beatles at the time. We already did the Beatles compilation, which was a huge success, not only here in the States, but had an awful lot of... Uh, of airplay over in Europe, but the same is happening with this monkeys thing. So we're going to be over at I think the second week in November. We're going to be over at Johnny D's. I'll have more information for that as we get closer. But we want to have a big CD release party and get everybody over there. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. Tim Casey, the Grand Wazoo of Low Budget Records, oh, outdid himself. It was an amazing compilation of music and an amazing collection of, uh, of musicians and artists. It was it was an awful lot of fun to be involved in it. I got to play bass, I got to play my ukulele, I got to play the guitar, so it was, it was kind of an awful lot of fun. So, uh, with that being said, we have a jam-packed show for you tonight. We're very, very excited about it, but I do have to do a little bit of business first. And for all of you who have sent emails or left messages saying that, how do I get to see these shows after the week goes by? Well, there is a YouTube um, page where you can go and uh, see all of the shows, all of the past shows. Not all 16 years of shows, but uh, many, many of them are being put up there. This one will be up there tomorrow if you uh, want to let somebody know about that. It's, at you, it's on YouTube and it is It's All About Arts, the number one. It's All About Arts, and that's the name of our station, I guess they call them on YouTube. But there's about 30 shows up there now, so please, and like I said, this one will be up there. Please visit, subscribe. Put in a comment or two on what you think we're doing, which is always nice to hear. Nice to hear people that are, um, that are watching the show. And I have to shout out to uh, Seattle, Washington. We had a great email from someone in Seattle who was a friend of a guest of ours a couple of weeks ago who said that they tuned in and saw the Mr. Kurt Ensemble play, uh, MC4. And they said that they're going to be uh, tuning in every now and then to check us out. How do they do that? They go to www.bnntv.org. 
and that gets you on, right on the main screen of the website, BNN's website. If you click what's playing now, there I'll be. It'll be uh, whatever's on the air at that time. You can watch it live. So tell your friends. You can see it anywhere, anywhere, anytime. So give, it a, uh, give us a shout and let us know what you think we're doing. Um, speaking of, uh, of the Rosendale Village Main Streets Farmers Market, we are so proud of our affiliation with the Boston Main Streets program. Boston Main Street keeps us on the, on the air here, and they have been a supporter of this show for a lot of years. And uh, the Main Street Program is an organization of volunteers who help revitalize the business districts around the city. There's about 19 of them around Boston, but they are everywhere in the country. And what they do is they help the business owners with demographic information about what, you know, kind of who's living in their community as they're putting in their new business in their storefront. What kind of things do they need for that community? What are people spending their money in outside of that community? So they give them all that demographic information on what you can get and, and, and the kind of people that are, well, not the kind of people, the sort of people that are living in the community and the kinds of things that they need. Then there is the design committee, which is full of architects and, and artists and engineers who are helping, once that business gets in there, make it look like it should, make the signage uh, professional. They actually have a program where if you take the grates down, no longer use the grates, they'll pay for half of the fabrication of that sign and all of the design. So it's a really uh, incredible organization, a real great program that they're doing. Uh, they've done some amazing things in Rosendale. I think Rosendale had over 100 grates in it. And now I think we're down in the single digits about the how many grates there are in Rosendale. Well, lo and behold, no one's broken into any of these stores. We understand when you put your life savings into your mom and pop store, you want to protect it at all costs. But we're finding out that the, the, more, the more work we put into that community, the more people respect what's going on. So if you see someone in a Main Streets t-shirt, and also the promotions committee, they run the farmer's market, the Taste of Rosendale, which is coming up, the Taste of Dedham, they, I mean the Taste of Charlestown, uh, lots of things in Jamaica Plain all over the city. So if you see someone with a Main Street's t-shirt, please thank them for the work that they do. They're volunteers, and they're only doing it because they love their community as much as you do. So make sure you thank them. The other thing I'd like to talk about, and I always like to take a couple of minutes to do that, is this amazing building that we're in. We're in Eggleston Square, 3025 Washington Street. It's the home of BNN TV. And the building used to be the power station that uh, powered the orange line going up and down Washington Street. For you veteran Bostonians, I'm sure you are familiar with the orange line. It used to run from Forest Hills all the way downtown. And um, this is where they got their power. This was full of generators and all kinds of people making sure that the place was working. And it became abandoned about many, many years ago. I'm not sure, 30 anyways 30 years ago and what they did was they uh, we being in uh, partnered with a bunch of great organizations urban edge is one of them and uh, we uh, built out this whole place to have two state-of-the-art television studios here and the reason that they're here is not so that I can sit in here and, and do television it's because so you can it is cable access, it is, this station, Channel 9, is the nonprofit side. What we do here is we give nonprofits an opportunity to come in and talk about their mission statement, talk a little bit about the kinds of things that they're doing for their community, bring in guests who can be specialists and talk about what they do. And uh, this is the place where you can get it done. People can call in and ask questions because this is live programming here. The other side of being in is where you become a member and you take some great classes on how to use these fascinating cameras, how to do the lighting, how to do sound, how to be a guest, how to be a host of a show, how to do some uh, footage outside, how to shoot on location, how to shoot the local Little League game, how to go down to the local municipal building and, and shoot what's going on down there as far as town meetings and stuff, and bring it back here and take some classes in Final Cut Pro and uh, edit it all up and guess what they put it on TV and this is the place where you get an opportunity to do all of those really cool things if you're sitting at home saying I can do what he's doing you're right you can if you go to www.bnntv.org click on Janice Williams's name she is the member manager she's in charge of all membership things and she has all the schedules and all the cool things you need to do to get in here if you want to talk to somebody who's been doing it forever I suggest you, you drop the great Jim Atwood an email if you have any questions that you want to, you know, if you just want to chat a little bit about what cable access is, a little bit of our history, some of the things that go on here, uh, give Jim Atwood a call. He's been at it since um, black and white TV, so. <laughs>
maybe not that long, but a long time he has been at it. So make sure you give them a call. But uh, I'm very, very proud of my long affiliation here with BNN. Uh, we were counting the shows the other day, and we are still editing and putting together some of those from the vault clips from way back. Uh, you can see the progression of my hairline. It hasn't always been as shiny as it is today. But uh, there was some great clips that we're putting together for an end-of-the-year show. So, listen, gang, thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it. We have a great show tonight. We're going to laugh a little. We're going to see some great, beautiful artwork. Uh, we've got a couple of things, things to do. And we're going to take a break right now. We're going to... Um, uh, great Suzanne Schultz, who is a past co-host of this program, and she's still a producer. She still sends guests, and she still does location work. She has a great video that she sent in that we're going to take a peek at right now. So listen, gang, don't go away. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, its host. And are they ready for that in the other room? You're standing there like you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about? Well, then I guess what we'll do is we'll take a video break right now. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please, do not go away. We're coming to you live from Studio B. We'll be back in just a little bit. Thanks.
Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. This is It's All About Arts. You're watching right now live on Monday night, if it's not one of the repeats. And uh, my name is Glenn Williams. We're coming to you live from Studio B. And you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. Give us a call at 617-708-3290. And uh, I want to remind everybody again that if you want to see any of the past shows or if there was a pa you know, someone you missed that's somewhere along the line, please make sure that you go to YouTube. And on our, on our YouTube channel is It's All About Arts 1. And right now, it is my great pleasure and honor to uh, introduce you to um, Mr. Tom Hayes. Hello, Tom. How are you? It's great to be with you. Why do I feel like I'm talking to Chaz Palmateri? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you heard that? Once. No. <laughs> really? I mean, it's so on. Oh, you know, I really? feel like I'm in a Bronx tale. You know the, you know the of movie. Of course I do. <laughs> yes, thank you. I mean, you've got the voice, you've got the looks, you've got the inflections, you know. What it's... would you tell Sonny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what Don't I go talk. on to TV. Don't go. Yes, stay out of the media. How I are? love the, uh, the video. Uh, oh, thanks. Talk about a, a 60s flashback. Yeah, that's <laughs> almost to the 60s. It's, really? it's, it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did have video back then. <laughs> Not black and white, but at least, exactly. at least we got to be able to do something. I like the little box effect. Isn't that you? cool? <laughs> you know, Tim was, was doing his bathroom over. That was shot <laughs> in the bathroom with all of the lathe and all the stuff. And I, had, and I had to sing it really, really fast so he could slow it down. We thought we were, we thought we were the Boy, cat's pajamas. Te I'll tell you, really high on along. the technology line. Uh, Tom, well, thank you for coming in. Thank you, and it's great. You're a natural. This well, is just well, super to see you. what you're doing. I, I have one observation. I grew up right here in this neighborhood. Did well, you? Two miles away. Well, then Bradley you know Street. about the rattler, then. I know, and, uh, the what? The rattler. We used to call it the rattler because oh, the, of the way it had to go through oh, yeah. Dudley on the <laughs> side <laughs> screeching through. The, 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 yes, sir, exactly. Yeah. And we used to... That, that was our entertainment, was to get on the, <laughs> get on the, the orange, orange line, line and take it to Northampton. Yeah. Because you could... Cr no, d uh, yes, Northampton, because you could just walk across. Yeah. And then go the other way. Come ride it back. And ride it all yeah. there. You did the same? Well, I had to take... I lived in Rosendale. Oh, oh You know, so... Oh. Yeah, I was way out there in Rosy. I was a Rosy guy. But I rode it every day to school because I went to school in Cambridge. Oh, all right. You know, so it was... Where? Charles River Academy. Out of my league. Not even St. Pat's. St. Pat's Grammar School. Really? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, I teach at Sacred Heart, so I have the parochial school thing going on. In Rosy? Yeah. Oh, okay. I went great. to school there. Oh. So I teach there now. Oh, okay. Great. They can't get rid of me. They try. <laughs> I just won't and go you teach away. music or...? I teach art. That's what we call ah. it out in Rosendale. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you warned me about the Boston accent. <laughs> that R, it's tough to get your, your tongue around that R. R. There are no R's. <laughs> uh, so, Tom, uh, we have you listed down. Well, first of all, thank you for joining BNN. I understand that you yeah. are a member. Yes. And that you're, you're taking the production courses here that I was talking about. Yeah, you want to hear a freaky story? Sh I'm ready for freaky well, stories. Well, you're an artist, so you understand the process of following the path of yes. Silver Thread and all the crazy things that happen. Yes. So we, I brought a video today that okay. we're going to see about uh, Bean Town. And in there is a, a character I created called the Boston Bean. Now, that whole thing came to me. I was retired, just having a little fun, started doing my autobiography. I'm also, a, besides being a comedian, also a corporate speaker. And computer crashes. And at those, remember, the, remember like 10 years ago, your computer would crash and you'd call some guy on the phone. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll tell you, yeah, I know. There were no geeks running around in cars coming to the house, <laughs> right? It wasn't an industry. It I was, was one of those guys at the Gillette Company. What, the fixed computer? No, I just, call, I just show up and unlock their cap. <laughs> I can't log on. I just go and get filled for a while, unlock the cap, charge them six hours. Yeah. <laughs> and what would happen is some guy would show up in his 50s or 60s that worked for Raytheon or yeah, Honeywell in right, the early days, right. you know, smoking a cigarette, you know, and oh, says, yeah. give me your computer, and, you, and you, you give this computer to the guy, and he's gone. It's your whole life. Yeah. You know. Well, anyway, this particular day, the computer crashes. I go out, and there's a lamppost with a little, one of those things you peel down, and, you know, you get computer repair, it says. So you call the number. Oh, with the tags on? Yeah. yeah I mean, the second, I mean, I'm like, that's sort of no doo 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 started. You know, right I felt like I was in the Matrix, you know. Yeah. And so I call the guy. A young guy walks in. To make a long story short, we hit it off. We decided to start a company. Because I wanted to do, in those days, only eight years ago, I wanted to do a newsletter, an actual physical. We were doing those. On paper? On paper. When Just you're eight, running them off yes, on the mimeograph? Eight years ago. Yeah. Think of that. Yeah. When we started, there was no YouTube. 
There was none of no Facebook, nothing. And you, we were doing, so we were going to do a thing. Before he did it, he takes me inside. He shows me, hey, before we do that, I want to take you to a site. And he says, before we do this animation, I had all the stories. We we're going to record them and then have a, an illustrator come in and do them. And so we go to this site called Foamy. I'll never forget it. And there's flash animation. And I'm like, wow, you know, TV. I mean, so I said to him, any way you can determine the click rate on that? And he says, yeah. So he's, you know, a million a day. That's great. Imagine. Those are hits. Imagine. Yeah. And then he took me to cut another one, uh, Homestar Runner, which was getting like two million a day. So I said, <gasps> let's do this. We start it. We, we start the characters of vegetables. I hire an animator right out of college. And in two weeks, he comes to me and says, I thought of a, a character uh, called the Boston Bean. And I was like, living in Boston my entire life, right? Right there. I called it Wheels on a Suitcase, you know, it's the, right? <laughs> How many centuries did we walk around? <laughs> carry everything. Einstein, carry everything Einstein carried bags, yes. and then there were the wheels, and nobody figured out, yeah. oh, why don't we do this? Now everything I own is on this little flat thing. <laughs> it's true. Amazing. Mm. I was at Apple today, there's lines around, oh, yeah. everybody lining sure. up, amazing. So anyway, we... Uh, Went with it, went crazy, created a mascot. We created, uh, talk about Menino. It was the 375th birthday of Boston. I saw him uh, going around the city. I said, he needs a bean. We didn't even have the mascot at that time. So we, we just Photoshopped the bean wherever he was. And he loved it. He embraced it. He put us in all these parades. And then Great. the thing took off. And then, Great. so we developed the toy line, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, around it. So that's kind of what you know, I brought it today, is my produced, I've always been a big fan of music. I, I heard that, like, jazz, you started off with some great jazz. What yeah. was that jazz piece? That was just something we threw together in the studio for the Roland. That's... You did it? I th Tim and I did it, Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Did you do, like, uh, some of the big scholars were got by a guy, did, were you? Uh, we, you know, we do more production oh, okay. than performing. We, you know, we, we did, we, we, Tim and I pl started playing rock and roll together in the, in the mid-70s, and, and then it kind of like we started recording in the 80s, once you could kind of do it at home a little bit on a quarter track and stuff, reel to reel. And then we did something that most, most gentlemen in our, our age group did. We had kids. And that was the end of, of our rock and roll <laughs> life for a little while. Your entire life. Yeah. Right, and, and so we recorded for a while, and then we, did, we got back into it. But yeah, we don't do... We're, we're, Three, oh, three good, two guitars, that's bass, it. I'll and tell drum. you, I got two things. I want. You, you mentioned the monkeys. Yes. Through this crazy little t journey, I was. We were. We were filming out at Acton Cable last year, doing mm -hmm. a children's show out there around the bean, and we brought it. And one of the producers brought in Dave Alexander, who plays, is playing and traveling with the monkeys right now. Some of them. Yeah, some of them. Right, but. <laughs> um, he he actually uh, oh what's, what was the the guy that the the one of the no, Mick, not Mickey but the other one Dolan's uh, well, it was Davy Jones Mickey J Davy Dolan, Jones Davy Peter Jones Talk. contacted him they worked together they put together um, a Brady Bunch was on Broadway and it was a, an episode where he was in yes in, he was going to take someone to the prom come right. on come on I right exactly <laughs> it passed me by but anyway. They worked together, Davey and he worked for, and then when he, Davey decided to take the monkeys on a tour, he hired him. And his whole dream, his whole life, because this reminded me, was to be a monkey. And he ended up being a monkey. <laughs> and so, uh, but that, and also, were, were you a Sugar Shack guy? I, mean, I remember the Sugar Shack, yeah. sure I do. Remember the Kenmore Clubs? I yeah, remember all yeah. that. I was a rat guy, too. I went to the Rat and Cantons oh, okay. down the waterfront. That's yeah. where we, but we the, did the most But the amazing groups were at the... At the Sugar Show. Yeah, just yeah. amazing. For the Boston Tea Party. So that comes full circle to the video, because I knew that if I had a character, I had to, of course, have music. You know what we should do? We've let's, talked about it. We should listen. We should take it. Let's video, we, and we throw I it produced on. this song, and I was the executive producer. I put the money up, but I okay. had two great local kids. Where do you see? They're, okay. And let's well, take let's a listen, shot. gang. Sit back and relax. We're going to take a listen to something. What's it called, Tom? Does it have a name? That's the bean. That's the bean. So sit back and relax, gang. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. It's quick, right? Yeah, three minutes. Yeah, okay. We'll be back in just a minute or two. Hang in there. Great Thanks. tune.
Bean Town on Lansdowne Street. You can hear the music playing, just follow the beat. For real, you can feel the excitement in the air. Leave your worries behind and just forget about your cares. Grab a Frank at Fenway and see a soft skin. Cause sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Don't forget, finding a spot shouldn't be hard. Cause you can always park your car at Harvard Yard. Stop by the aquarium to watch the dolphins swim. Or chill down at the harbor and watch the ships come in. Oh yeah, like Paul Revere, keep it moving, then I'm out. I squinting from the glare on top of the state house. No doubt, baby, you know how we do. Cause every time that we climb, we shine just like the crew. Okay, all the way from Mass Ave to Harvard Square, it's clear the spirit of the city's everywhere. When there's nothing to do, I go shopping at the pool in Bean Town. That's the beat. In Bean Town. That's the beat. On Newberry Street, get some new shoes for my feet in Bean Town. That's the beat. In Bean Town. That's the beat. Can't forget the neighborhood. About the zoo at Franklin Park, our festivals at Mountain Boulevard. I hop down to the Omni Show, cause the beans got the spirit, so don't you know? I'm in the bean town state of mind. Feeling fine on the charts, catching the last rays of sunshine, and you can tell the hat shells about to get live. Cause of all the commotion happening out on Stubble Drive, catching the shine every time the fireworks go off. I make it park like Keep Rock Hall, or you can find me at the garden with the white and the green. Cause hey, babe, I got nothing but love for the bean. Walking in the park, see the boats along the charts in Bean Town. That's the bean. That's great, isn't it? That was amazing. fabulous. Amazing. I cut. I cut. All, I edited that. That's great. Yeah. And, and what did you use a, to do it? I used iMovie to put yeah. all those images yeah. in. But the song was, again. The song was produced back in 2005. Who did it? A great group, Lo um, One Love. And again, all of the serendipity, crazy. Love. I met an illustrator here tonight. Children, yes. So who knows where that will go? Well, this, there's always there's all kinds of people to run into here. This is a great spot. Well, you know, the, the the process for me, and I'd always kind of been a creative, but nothing like a total investment in creativity, <laughs> and like the, the thing. No, I mean everything, <laughs> not just energy, but money, everything. And when all of a sudden you start down that road, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's Alice in Wonderland, you yeah. know, the events and well, the people. Well, I got I to tell you, when I, when I left the corporate world, I, I, I decided, you know, I'm going to go all in. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, we put a studio, recording studio in the house, and, and uh, I, uh, I got myself to where I can teach, and, uh, and now I'm teaching full time at three different places, oh, good feeling. and uh, in doing this and finding time to, to, you know, be sound engineer for here and there and what have you. So I'm all in as far as you know, music and arts go. And I then the it. magic happens. You meet people, and, and that's that, the cool part of the people. Yeah, and, but they take the direction. So anyway, I was I knew I needed a song. I was performing in a place in Lowell. Somebody here has a studio in Lowell, to the next guest. But I was sitting there entertaining, and this uh, couple call themselves One Love. They both come from the Boston area. In fact, mm -hmm. um, Ruby comes from right up on the hill here. Great. And uh, well, thank you for using local cats. That's oh, important. Well, that's I am. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's all about Boston. We, yeah. <laughs> do we have to go anywhere else? I don't think you ever have to <laughs> to get any. Look at the movies. To get anything creative, oh, I don't think you have yeah, to travel got, very far. You know, we've got the music schools. We've got the yeah. film and everything. So anyway, they 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 did this beautiful. I'm not a big 
totally into all rap, but they just do this beautiful It surprised melodic. me with the song. I, beautiful, wasn't, I wasn't expecting yeah, it to be beautiful that. beautiful melody, though. They've uh, got a beautiful, oh, it's very good. beautiful message. You know, I, we've got just a minute or two left, but I, I want to talk a little bit about your, your co comedic work. Hmm. So you're a funny guy, huh? Well, when I get on stage, I look at the audience and say, I know what you're thinking. What's this guy going to do? Uh, taxes? <laughs> and that usually starts it off. If it doesn't, I'm in big trouble. But <laughs> you got to have them right away. I got the look. I've got the Larry David, yeah, uh, you know. That's cool. In that's the early right. days, I had the Wood Woody Allen thing, but I don't have that. Are you that. performing? Oh, yeah. I yeah. get around. What kind of gigs are you doing? Stand up, yeah. you know. But this is why I'm getting back to your other question. Why am I here? I see this is the future. I mean, come on. This the, is it. <laughs> The production. We're live in people's yeah. rooms right now. Yeah. You know, but I mean, think of the production. I mean, the, with, with YouTube, with, I mean, it's limitless. They're, you know, I, I talk to the inner city schools a lot, mm -hmm. and I tell kids, fifth graders, oh, by the way, you'll do this. Okay. <laughs> Down. <laughs> At the age of 13, living here in Boston, I lost my leg too. <laughs> Playing I'll on the orange a, line? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no, I escaped a very, very dangerous form, a uh, lethal form of uh, cancer, osteosarcoma. Mm. And so, Good, I'm glad. Yeah, me too, because oh, in those days, only 5% survived. So, um, without chemo. So, I'm a survivor. I not only survived drugs, but I survived uh, cancer. So cancer I, I, took, I took the hits. They took good shots. I just lost the leg, man. I was, lucky. but I got out. That's good. But uh, so anyway, uh, but it was around for the whole comedy thing in Boston, which was an amazing yeah. renaissance. Well, Nick's and all the rooms oh, and stuff. They had some was great I was there. Places. I didn't have to go anywhere. Yeah, it came right. to me. That's you know, it was phenomenal. Do you have any gigs coming up that we should tell people about so they nah, can come well, and see? I'm out of state for a few mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah, we have people watching all over. They may yeah, be yeah. Uh, um, Actually, a little private party. and I'll be in Manchester the second week in October okay. at the uh, club uh, headliners. Okay. So, yeah, check that out. And, um, but this is, to me, this is where we can reach... Oh, what's your viewership? How many? A lot. Thank <laughs> you. I'll put that down a lot. <laughs> Tom, thank you so thank much. You. Thank it's you. It was fun, Chaz. Can I thank come you. back? Absolutely. You're going to be in the building. Uh, that's true. How am I going to be able to avoid it? <laughs> Tom, thank you. Right. Tom Hayes, thank I appreciate you. it. No, don't move. Oh, you can stay. Listen, gang, thanks an awful lot. Listen, we, we just half done. We just, just started up. Listen, gang, hang in there. We're going to take a quick break. We'll look at another quick video. We're going to have that Suzanne Schultz video up next week. Uh, we've kind of, we're going to, we'll fix it and get it all so we'll be able to see it. But um, we're going to take another little video out of the um, low budget vault and we're going to have, we're going to, and Irene's going to be up in just a couple of seconds. Listen, gang, don't go away. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Thanks. When I look into your eyes, I can see your mother's smile. I can see the moon and stars up in the sky. I can see beyond the
Well, thanks for hanging in there with us, gang. Uh, you are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and we are coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV. And you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. Give us a call, 617-708-3290. Great staff of BNN with Davey or in the other room answering the phones if you feel like dropping in and saying hello. It's my great pleasure and honor to invite back old friend Irene Richards. Hello. How are you How doing? How are you? Good. How's Good. everything? Great. Busy. Very busy. Are you? Yeah, very busy. This is, uh, um, I like the, uh, I saw some of the stuff you've, you've brought in today. I'm very, very happy. It's beautiful oh, work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, if, if, if I had to, if you were, if you were joining a, a web group and there was a drop-down menu that, that had to, and you had to pick a category of the kind of artist you are, uh, water, whatever, whatever the categories would be, what, what do you think you'd pick, I mean, for yourself? Well, the startup would probably be figurative. Figure okay. to work. Okay. Um, uh, colorful. Um, I'd say there's colorful, whimsy, playful. Um, it's just a mix of everything. I, yeah. think it's, I think it's a lot to do with the fact that I've been a children's book illustrator for years. Yes. And so I think that plays a part in, in the images that I, that I paint. What are the, what's the medium you're using? Uh, I'm, on my canvases, I'm using uh, acrylic. Okay. Uh, is, uh, you on canvas or on on paper. Have you always been acrylic? Is, is it always. Been something yeah, that you've always. always loved? Yeah, I yeah. Do. Is it the blending and mixing of the colors? I like the fact that it dries fast. Yeah, I really like on. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I don't have the patience to sit and wait for it to dry. <laughs> Oil, oil's a real commitment. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I mean, you've got to clean. There's all kinds no, no, of cleaning, and then you've got to layer it in and wait for the colors to dry. Yeah, it's I can't just, do that. It's like yeah. too, way too long. Acrylics are, are a lot of fun. Our Janice is a, is an acrylic painter too, and she's in the middle of doing two or three pieces because we've got Roz in the local right. studios coming oh, up. Oh, absolutely. That's right. You That's know, right. so it's, um, it's going to be... Uh, As do we in our studio. We have open studios where we are, too. Where? At Western Ave. Okay. In great. Lowell. Lowell. How is it? When is it? Uh, it's actually October, the first weekend in October. So it's the 4th and 5th, I think. It's coming it up. It's coming up really soon. So it's like a Saturday and a Sunday. Now, where are you going to be showing? In your gallery? I have a studio in there. In your studio? I do have a studio. So you have a committed space where you can I work? I do. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Not everybody has afforded that luxury. I mean, our Janice works at the kitchen table. Right. Well, I did that for many years, too. Yeah. I mean, many, many years. And it's comfortable, you know, but sometimes it's nice to be able to come into a room the way you left it. Of course. Absolutely. Uh, do you do anything particular to, to make the environment yours? Absolutely. Without I mean, a doubt. Are you listening to Devo or... or or some, oh, I definitely some play, rap I, or something, I don't know. Well, the interesting thing about this place is that they, we don't, the walls don't go all the way up to the ceiling. And so with that said, we have, I have neighbors on either side. So I have to be very, um, you know, I have to be very nice about what I play. I can't play really loud music. So a lot of times I wear the earphones. Okay. So you're in one of these communal... It is a com it's a huge thing. community. There's like 300 artists in this. In Yikes! This, yeah, it's huge. Where is it in Lowell? It's actually on Western Ave okay. in Lowell. It's act it, it is the largest artist community on the East Coast. That's amazing. That's it is. Congratulations. How long have you been in there? Almost five years. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. How big a space is it? Well, I just moved out of my smaller space because I paint large and I kind of maxed out on it. <laughs> um, I, I, absolutely, I tried so hard not to have to pay more rent, but... Mm. I had to move. I had to move in a bigger space. Right. So my space right now is uh, 492 square feet, which is a nice, nice that's space. Not, that's not bad. I know it's, it's not big. It's not well. 
but it has two nice windows. It looks. Oh, like you have some natural light. I have, I have I'd two. I hate to be in the middle of those cl those clumps. I don't know. know. Nice windows. I look out onto the canal. It's really it's well, nice. It's so I see the little boat. Estate. I see the little boats going by. You know, well, during the summer great. they have all the tour groups. So you hear the like them coming down the canal. Well, that's great. No, it is. It's great. It's really. So great. you'll you'll use headphones and um, uh, are you listening to any particular kind of music or are you kind of picking up whatever happens to be thrown your way? Uh, Spotify. I have to say. Spotify, that's what it is. Spotify, or, or you know, I just kind of put that on and see what happens. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't. I, I change it up. I change it up. Now, I change, when, when, you, different when music. you're working on a piece, is it, is, is it, is there a lot of prep work where you're drawing pieces in, and, or is it an adventure across the canvas? For uh, you? No, I always do little spot illustrations. I, I mean, little drawings first. Yeah. I try to sketch out yeah. what I want to do, and then I draw it onto the canvas. And then I start painting, and I try to stay true to the imagery of what I started with, but it doesn't necessarily stay exactly yeah. to, on point from what right. the little sketches. But it's, it, it evolves as you're painting, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I, lo I love it when a canvas can grow for you. Absolutely. You know, and, and it kind of makes it more of an adventure for you. Absolutely. Um, do, are you able to work on more than one piece at a time? You know, I have, I have, but I'm, I'm one of these people. I, I like super focused on one thing. Mm -hmm. I like working on it, even though it's, it could be very challenging at times. I just like working through those difficult times mm -hmm. and saying, I'm going to make this happen, you know, figure mm -hmm. it out. Uh, uh, can you say, can you, are you the kind of artist, I'm sure, I'm not the kind of artist, it's kind <laughs> of a weird thing to say, but are you an artist that can uh, say, well, Saturday afternoon I have two hours, I'm going to go up there and finish the, that, that one piece that I oh, was I do working do that. on. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. So it's not a bolt of lightning that has to come and strike Oh, you. no, no, I absolutely, I love my studio. I love being in this community. I just find the minute I drive over there and I get out of my car, I'm just, I'm really happy. Yeah, I'm so happy because it's course, my space. You're doing art. It's my space. I'm doing art. I mean, you, I couldn't be happier. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm by my, I have my studio. I mean, I'll go in there. If I, one thing I do like, I really do enjoy having a canvas on on the on the easel that I've already started so you can just sort of pick up where you left off. Mm -hmm. It's a little harder when you're starting new. I'm gonna go on the other end of that. When do you know you're done? That's a really good question. Um, I think that's something that takes time to figure that out mm. based on your own work. I mean mm. I think you know I can't you know that's a really good question because now I'm thinking there's some there's some older pieces that I will revisit and, you know, over like three years have gone by and I'll look at them and say, you know, I still like this piece. I still think it has good bones to it, but I'm painting differently now and mm. I really think I can make it better. Well, and I do do that. Three years go by and it's still in, in the shop. Exactly. And that's the done. other thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the way I would look at it. And so I try to, I take it and I'm saying, you know, and I look forward to it. I actually get excited about the idea mm -hmm. of taking this piece. And in fact, I just got a piece into the Concord Art Association, the Roddy Show. Oh, congratulations. Which was one of those situations. I actually was waiting for somebody to come into my studio, electrician, to put in an outlet. And he said he was going to be there at, you know, noontime or whatever. And he didn't show up until 6.30. So it gave me like many, many hours to sit there <laughs> and wor rework this painting. And the end result was quite, you know, it really worked. I was very, very happy. With that, in yeah. fact, you know, and then I, I I took it and applied for this show, and it got in. Juried? Yes, very tough show to get into. <sighs> yeah, I gotta very tell you, tough. I've been asked to jury things, and I, I it is it's tough. <laughs> I know it. It really it takes a lot out of you to yeah, do it. Yeah, it does. Um, you brought some pieces for I us did. to see. I did. So why don't we switch over to that and take a look at some of these pieces? Walk me through a little bit. Um, this is great. Thank you, thank you. This piece is actually a really large piece. It's a. What is it's the a, size? It's 40 by 60, so it definitely makes a statement. Yes, it does. And uh, that was probably one of the hardest, one of the harder pieces that I've done, uh, mainly because of the three. There's three characters, there's three women, the different colors, the animals, the textures that are involved in there, mm -hmm. and trying, and, and plus the fact that it was so big. Yeah. So it, it took a long time to figure out the right colors to make it work. Excellent. Okay. And I brought this one. I actually brought the dog. I, do, I did the dog thing because I do do dog portraits for people. Um, it does look slightly different from the other from the women, but I said, you know, I'll just throw this in for today. And just, that's it's great. Yeah, I do a lot of dog portraits. So this is a dog that's a local dog in Andover, and uh, an absolutely fantastic dog. So I did this for uh, a gentleman. This is his dog. How did you get him to sit for you? No, oh, good I'm one. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, I've had people come into my studio with their dogs. Paint me? Really? Yeah, they oh. think that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going, no, I don't mm, need to do that. Let's get some photos. Just send me, just send me a let's photo. Let's get some Polaroids that's going. That's right. Okay. That's right. So this is also part of the collection, like the, the other three women. 
Um, these are part of a collection called the Snazzy Gal Collection. Yeah. And um, they are actually in the process of getting licensed as well. So I'm working with a licensing agent. And so my, my goal and objective is to get these women on product. On product or right. illustrated in a book or something? No, not necessarily the book, but they're mostly on product, you know, okay. varying products, different yeah. all kinds of things. Very cool. Thank you. Also a large piece. Um, this particular piece, I actually haven't seen in a while. It's, it's actually in a gallery in uh, Florida. Wow. So it's down there. So I have my pieces in many in places. I like the girl peeking. This, this um, painting is called, um, what's it called? That Boy is Mine, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> they both got designs on the same <laughs> exactly. gentleman. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, this is called Three is a Charm. And um, I've had customers come in, fall in love with this painting, and ask me to do a painting of her three of her daughters. You know, put in elements of their oh, like they, the daughter. Yeah, yeah the things yeah. that their daughters like. One of them wears you know some a particular type of jewelry, and right, you know. Right. So I do customize these paintings for people for customers. And this one's called <laughs> uh, Why Not Me. Goes along with the other one. It does, uh, you know. It's you know. I, I don't. Maybe it's because I have a, a daughter who's in her twenties, and I just have you know. And she tells me all these stories about you know going out and you know and the whole date tells us right, everything. Right, and the, whole and the whole dating scene. <laughs> so maybe you know I'm, I'm living vicariously through these ladies. You know this this whole this whole um, lifestyle. I love and, it. And so I you know I paint moments in time. You know yeah. where, where you know you, you could see them getting this woman getting all dressed up feeling really great about herself, looking at her friends having a good time, and she's sitting there at the bar going, why not me? Why, why, why aren't they approaching me? So. Very cool. Great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, will these be at the uh, Lowell Open Studios? I do have a lot, of, a lot of my paintings at the Lowell Open Studios. Do you have a gallery there as well? There is a gallery on the, it's called the Loading Dock Gallery. Uh -huh. And they do have monthly shows there. And they also have, it's a cooperative gallery. So you have to become a member of the do gallery. Do they pull a number out of a hat for 300 people? How do you get? Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a cooperative gallery, so if you choose to be a part of this gallery, it's an extra expense. Mm. So it's not something that necessarily everybody wants to do. Right. Um, they do have, they're always looking for members, you know, to be a part of it. Um, and then they also have a, an area in which they sell paint, you know, other painting, but they have a show every month. They change mm. it up. Can you, can, uh, I'm not going to, um, yes, I am going to ask. Can you, re can you remember back to when art was going to, when you made the decision when art was going to, be something that you were going to be putting a lot of your energy and time into. Um, how difficult of a decision is that to make, and is, is it scary a little bit? Um, I've known since I was a very young child you that this was what I was going to do. Okay. Um, I forget. Was it? Is it scary? Um, you know, sometimes it gets um, disappointing. It's disappointing because I put in as much work. They call it artwork for a reason. Yes, they do. You know, it's work. And so I put in many, many hours into this. And um, it's just, you know, it's a constant struggle. So it's not a paycheck every week. You know, it's right. not something where you're going to a job and getting a paycheck every week. So I have to really do a lot of the marketing. It's the business side. You know, it's trying to balance the artistic side, the business side, right. and the marketing side. Right. And, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot involved with it. Because artwork, like music, artwork, artwork is something that's so personal. It's, it's a big pot of you that you've put out on canvas, and now you're letting people see it. Absolutely. And you're asking them to jury it. Every time someone looks at your work, oh, I live the life. I, I live the life of rejection. I mean, that's what most artists do. It's but, difficult. But it's difficult, but I've been doing this for so long. I mean, as a children's book illustrator, as an illustrator, I mean, I put my work out there for publishers. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes don't get the job that, mm -hmm. that I put, put myself out there for. But it doesn't necessarily mean the work is bad. It means necessarily it just doesn't fit for that particular situation. And I think a lot of artists That's a healthy way of looking well, at it. But, but very often it is. Because yeah. I feel, you know, maybe it's, being, maybe it's being arrogant, but I feel that I've reached a level of expertise where I can say that. I yeah. mean, I know the work is... It's decent work. Well, confidence in your work, I think you have to have that in order to put it out there in the first place. You absolutely do. But I think sometimes a lot of artists put the cart before the horse, mm -hmm. and sometimes they put the work out before it's ready to be seen. I think they need to That's work on it. That's one of the things it. Suzanne has told us many times, is make sure you're ready for this. Absolutely. You have to be ready. You yeah. have to be ready to be you know, rejected or, or any of the other parts, or any of the other parts. But, you know, the successes are also wonderful, too. You know, to get, it, to get um, chosen by a particular 
juror in, yes. a, in a show that where they had 550 submissions and they took 94 pieces. That's very I mean, good. you know, it feels good to be able to do that sure. or get yourself into a gallery. Sure. I mean, I did also Art Expo in New York. I mean, I've gotten to do some really big shows. Yeah. You know, I feel grateful and published in Art Business News. I mean, I've had a lot of fun and exciting things, but it didn't just happen overnight. This mm -hmm. has been a, a work in progress. So right. I, and I've worked really hard. I'm sure. When somebody does take a piece down and wraps it up and cuts you a check, do you have separation issues? No, not anymore. Get it out of here? Absolutely. You know why? Because mm. I paint a lot. Yeah. You know, I think if you have a lot of inventory, yeah. it's like, I'm so happy you love this piece, enjoy it, look at it every day, and it makes me happy. Right. It makes me happy because I'm on to the next piece. Right. The open studios, the whole open studios thing gives, pe gives the public an opportunity to come and meet, meet the artists. Uh, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, and talk a little bit with them. Yes. That whole thing has been missing in years past where people don't get a chance to actually understand the journey you've taken or understand right. the inspiration you've put into it. Right. Do you enjoy that part? I do, actually. I love talking to yeah. people. I love when they come in. I'm, I'm very personal. They, they, they enjoy my studio. My studio is very fun. It's very colorful, like the images that you were just yeah. shown. It's very fun. I, I mean, I have great lighting in there so they can really see the images. They like talking to me about the illustration side of me. They like talking to me about the painting side of me. Um, and they like to see what I'm working on. It, it is fascinating, fascinating for them because they don't get the opportunity to do that often. Yeah, that was our original mission here was for people to get to meet the artists and, and we'll humanize them if I can use that word because sometimes right. they, they think, oh, I don't want to. It's a disconnect. There's yeah. actually a disconnect. And yeah. I found that with actually in the children's book illustration yeah. field where people, they see a book, but they don't really understand that there's a connection between there's an artist who actually drew those right. pictures and a writer who wrote those words. Right. And there's a disconnect when you say, oh, I did that book, I illustrated that. You're kidding, really? <laughs> you know, they, they just, they always are always amazed, you know. It's Speaking like of the rejection part of the whole thing, uh, our Janice brought in one time, we were talking to writers and stuff, and she plunked down that shoebox of rejection letters. Oh, yeah, you can, you can wallpaper a room. <laughs> you can wallpaper a room with that stuff. And the two that got her into Reader's Digest or something, you know, and oh, yeah. that was the big, I mean, thank you. Thank is, there, you. is there a website people can go to visit Yes, you? they can. They can go to um, Eileen. It's actually I -L Eileen, I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's EileenRichard.com. That's well, my th website. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you I for really having me here. I really appreciate it. Good luck at Open Studios. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, listen, gang, thanks an awful lot for being here with us tonight. This was fun. It's always a great time to visit with you. And like I said, remember, if you want to see any of the past shows or this show again tomorrow, you can go to It's All About Arts 1 on YouTube. Listen, gang, get out there and do something artful for yourself, please. <laughs> and uh, enjoy the artful <laughs> world that you are surrounded with. Walk around with your eyes wide open. And like I like to say every single week, please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews on foreign soil, please. Do something awful, do it for them. You'll feel good, they'll feel good. Listen, we'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye now.